Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Weirman here coming to you with another daily devotion for December 29th. It is Tuesday, 2020. And again, we're using 40 Days of Community by Rick Warren. So we are still in the theme, we're chosen to fellowship together. And we do that by getting along with each other. Hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> First Corinthians 110 states, that's a Paul writing to the church in Corinth, and he says, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to stop arguing amongst yourselves. Let there be real harmony so that there won't be splits in the church. I plead with you to be of one mind, united in thought and purpose. The writers write, stop trying to win arguments. Instead, make it your goal to love those who disagree with you. Go for the love, not the win. Jesus tells us love will always win. He guaranteed that when he walked out of the tomb. When you find yourself in an argument with other believers, use these biblical guidelines for getting along. Number one, let mercy be your guide. In a conflict, most of us say we only want what's fair, but God's approach isn't about being fair. It's about grace and mercy. Number two, let God determine the truth. The truth is not determined by your feelings or your thoughts or the opinions of others. Truth is what God says it is. He is the lone authority for interpreting any situation. Number three, look for God's presence in the middle of the conflict. Satan wants us to believe that we're all in this battle alone. Simon Peter provides an example of fighting alone. His use of blustery words, swords, curses, and lies were all desperate attempts to care for himself. He fought as a man separated from God. But we should follow the example of the young shepherd boy, David, who believed God was in the fight and that the battle belonged to the Lord. So you remember young David believed that God was in the fight with him against the Philistine, and all he needed was a slingshot and five stones. Number three, four, lean on the mind of Christ. The Bible says we shouldn't rely on our own understanding because what appears to be right to us may very well be wrong. Did you ever think you were so right about something, then you find out you were so wrong? Oh, isn't that a terrible feeling? A lot of times we're wrong. Number six, look for the conflict's true source. According to God's word, we're really not fighting other people. Our enemy is Satan and his unseen spiritual forces of wickedness. Number seven, lay down human weapons. When we try to meet our own needs working independently of God, we tend to use what the Apostle Paul called weapons of the flesh. These are some of the weapons of the flesh. See if you think that you use these in the middle of a conflict. Number one, manipulation. I'll let that sit there for a minute. Gossip, slander, ridicule, threats, blame, nagging, deception, and silence. Silence can be a very abusive form of emotional abuse. I'll let that sit there. When we use them, these fleshy tactics, we end up with we end up in an evil for evil cycle, and that's like trying to fight a skunk with stink. <laughs> Everybody loses. That's funny. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Last one. Learn to use spiritual weapons, not fleshy weapons. And the best spiritual weapon in the midst of a conflict is, you guessed it, prayer. But the Bible tells us that prayer is a powerful weapon against evil. Many Christians never think to pray together when an argument breaks out. Yet prayer reminds us who God is and who we are as his children. Prayer puts an eternal perspective on any argument. Forgiveness is another spiritual weapon. The power of forgiveness is greater than anything the enemy can ever throw against us. We don't always have to agree or get along. Our verse tells us, let there be real harmony. In an orchestra, there's a big difference between unison and harmony. If all the musicians played in unison all the time, the music would be get pretty boring. It's the harmony that creates beauty in music with different players playing different instruments and different notes, but all under the direction of one conductor. So the goal of each musician is not to play louder than the others or to win the argument or to always think that they're right because most of the time we're not right. I just am going to let everybody know that. <laughs> most of the time we're not right. So the other is to finish. The goal is to be of one mind, united in one thought and one purpose. When this happens, the music is heavenly. So uh, points to ponder, go for the love, not the win. 
So many people are out to win, aren't they? Any little thing somebody says, they're ready to jump on and say they were offended. I wasn't even talking to you, but okay. <laughs> they want to win, 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 because it's all about them, them, them. My husband and I were just having that conversation. I had to leave the room because <laughs> he's pretty negative about humanity right now. And that is so sad because the church's job is to get along with one another. That's what Paul tells us. And when the church doesn't get along with one another, then how do we expect the world to get along with one another when they're watching the church? Question to ponder. If you have a conflict with a brother or sister in Christ, what will you do to seek reconciliation? That doesn't mean you need to grovel and, you know, continue to get beaten up or abused. But what that means is that you need to pray and you need to ask God to handle it for you because God is in the fight with you. And if you can reconcile, that's great. But a lot of times all you can do is just choose to forgive and then move on. So I hope this was helpful to you. I will be back here tomorrow with another 40 Days of Community devotional. Have a great day today. Bye-bye.